So guys, we are going to continue the discussion with respect to simple linear regression. In our previous video, we had discussed about cost function and how we could actually find out different different cost function by changing our theta one value. And we also saw that we could form a gradient descent curve, which is this kind of curve. And our main aim is basically to come up to this global minima because in this global minima, when come near this global minima, that basically means we are very much near to the best fit line because our cost function is quite minimal. But when we are trying to find out our cost function, we were randomly changing our theta one value, which is our slope. First time I took one, then we took 0.5 and then I selected at zero. This is not an efficient technique. So I told you that we will be discussing about a convergence algorithm, which will actually help you to initialize one theta one value and automatically, you know, based on this gradient descent, it should be able to, you know, increase the theta one value or decrease the theta one value. So let's understand the convergence algorithm. So over here, I'm just going to mention the convergence algorithm, which is super important for the optimized technique. Okay. So this is the convergence algorithm and this convergence algorithm main aim is to optimize the changes of theta one value, which is my theta one value. Okay. Which is my slope. Okay. In this particular problem statement. So what does convergence algorithm basically say? Convergence algorithm basically say repeat until convergence. Okay. Until convergence basically means until we reach the global minima, the specific global minima point. Okay. This specific global minima point. So here you can see that when we reach this global minima point, we got the best fit line or at least if we come near this, we will probably get the best fit line. Okay. So repeat until convergence. And here I'm just going to write a simple equation, which is like theta of J. Okay. Theta of J is equal to theta of J minus. Okay. Alpha, alpha, I'll talk about this. What exactly is alpha? And then we are going to basically write derivative of theta j with respect to the j theta one. Okay. <clears throat> or here I'm just going to basically write theta j. Now, what exactly this is? Okay. Now try to understand. Okay. Uh, this theta j initially we'll initialize something and then we'll try to find out the cost function. And obviously, you know that with respect to the cost function, how does the cost function basically is created, created? So here, if I initialize and create a graph with respect to theta j and j of theta. Okay. So this is what we created this graph, right? Over here, you could see this, right? You know that we usually get this kind of gradient descent, right? Let's say with respect to, and this equation will definitely work. Okay. Well, this equation is definitely going to work. That basically means this equation actually helps us to change our theta value, specifically in our problem statement, the theta one value much more efficiently, much more efficiently. So we are going to change this theta one value much more efficiently. How? Okay. So let's consider my theta J value is somewhere at this specific point. So J of theta will be coming somewhere here. Okay. Let's consider that this is the point that I'm going to probably get. Okay. Now you need to understand what exactly this is. Okay. Derivative of theta J derivative of theta J with respect to J of theta J. Okay. With respect to the, in short, we are just trying to find out the derivative of this specific point. Now, whenever we say derivative in short, we are going to calculate the slope. Okay. Now let's say we have initialized one theta one value randomly at this point. We got our J of theta at this particular point. Now our main aim is that we need to come to this specific point. Okay. Because why, why this specific point we really need to come. Let me just draw it much more betterly. So let's, let's draw this curve like this. Our main aim is to come to this point. Okay. This point is basically my global minima or near to this point. Right? This point, if I come, which is my global minima, then we are basically getting our best fit line. Okay. Now, Initially, my theta value got initialized at this particular point. I got J of theta, but I have to make sure that I come to this specific one. My J of theta should come to this point so that my cost will basically minimize, right? Now, my theta of J, how do I make sure that, how do I make the changes such that my J of theta will come over here that we are going to look at. Now, as soon as it comes over here, this derivative of 
डेरिवेटिव ऑफ जे ऑफ थीटा विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू थीटा जे इज नथिंग बट वी आर ट्राइंग टू कैलकुलेट द स्लोप एट दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट दैट इज वॉट डेरिवेटिव स्पेसिफाइज ओके नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस हाउ डू वी अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू ओके इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड आउट द डेरिवेटिव वन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट यू रियली नीड टू फाइंड आउट इज दैट वेदर दिस इज अ पॉजिटिव स्लोप और नेगेटिव स्लोप बिकॉज डेरिवेटिव इज नथिंग बट वी आर एक्चुअली ट्राइंग टू कैलकुलेट द स्लोप ओके वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट द स्लोप ओके सो फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट वॉट वी डू इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट द स्लोप वी क्रिएट अ टैंजेंट लाइन लाइक दिस ओके लेट से विद दैट वी आर क्रिएटिंग दिस टैंजेंट लाइन सो दिस टैंजेंट लाइन विल प्रॉब्लम गेट क्रिएटेड लाइक दिस ओके नाउ वेन वी आर क्रिएटिंग दिस टैंजेंट लाइन first of all you need to find out that see the right side of the line okay because one important thing that we need to find out over here that whether it is a positive slope or a negative slope because if we are able to find out whether it is a positive slope or negative slope then we will be able to understand whether we have to reduce our theta j value or whether we have to increase our theta j value okay now in this particular case at this particular point if i really need to understand whether this is a positive or negative slope just see the right part of the line the right of the part of the line is facing downwards okay if it is facing downwards we will be saying this as negative slope now when we say negative slope that basically means whenever we try to find out the derivative this value is going to be negative okay this value is going to be negative so what we are going to do is that we will just suppose i get a negative slope so in short i will write theta j is equal to theta j minus some learning rate alpha i'll talk about why alpha is used and this will be my negative value okay this will be my negative value so in short this basically indicates that my theta j i have to probably add with some positive value right because negative into negative will be positive so i have to add this specific positive value and it is true over here because i need to basically increase my theta j value so if i do this iterative process again and again wherein i am continuously getting a negative slope that basically means i have to increase my theta j value so that i reach my global minima so this equation is going to add some value into my theta j how much value we don't know since this is an iterative process our main aim is to basically optimize optimize this process of selecting different different theta one value right so in this way what will happen we are incrementing or we are increasing our theta j value then in the next theta j whatever will be my cost function again that specific point will come over here let's say it is coming over here then again i will try to go and find out this slope again if it is a negative slope we keep on adding so slowly slowly you will be seeing that we will be able to converge it towards the global minima okay this is one process what about what about now in this particular case i got negative slope what about if i get another point over here and this particular point is actually a positive slope how do i get a positive slope because if i try to create a best if i try to create a tangent line just see the right part of the line right part of the line is pointing upwards so this becomes a positive slope now in the case of positive slope i really need to decrease my theta j value right let's say that initially my theta 1 was over here and i got my j of theta 1 over here so here i have to decrease it okay i have to decrease it then only i'll be able to reach the global minima so does this satisfy yes it does satisfy because if i write now theta j is equal to theta j minus alpha and now this is my positive slope right so here with respect to this whenever i try to find out the derivative it is a positive slope now whenever it is a positive slope all i am actually doing i'm subtracting with some value some positive value when i subtract with some positive value that basically means i have to basically decrease my theta j value and if i continuously perform this process after some time you will be able to see that i am going to basically come at this specific point okay so obviously this convergence algorithm will obviously work because what i am actually doing is that we are trying to calculate the slope in such a way that where if it is a negative slope the theta j value it is going to increase if it is a positive slope the theta j value it will decrease okay so this is what is a convergence algorithm all about okay now there is one important parameter that we did not discuss about is something called as alpha so what exactly is this alpha alpha is nothing but this is specifically a learning rate 
learning rate usually is a smaller value that is basically initialized. Let's consider the learning rate that may be initialized for my problem statement is 0 0.001. Now, what is the importance of this learning rate? Learning rate controls the speed at which the conversion should happen. Okay. If it is a very, very small value, then it will probably take more time to converge. If it is a very big value, then it may happen in such a way that it may continuously jump here and there and it may never converge. So it, you always have to make sure that you try to select a smaller value, but it should not be a very, very smaller value. It should be like 0 0.001, which is a very good practice that we should try to select. Okay. In simple linear regression only, uh, alpha is equal to 0 0.001 in a scale on library that we use is basically getting selected. So if anybody asks you in an interview, like what is the importance of learning rate? You can definitely say that it actually the controls the convergence, right? How slow the convergence should happen. Okay. So this is what it basically says, right? So I hope you have understood about the convergence algorithm. And this process continues unless and until we don't come near this global minima and we don't basically converge over here. As soon as we converge at this particular point, you will be seeing that we will try to get the best fit line, which is this specific line with respect to any kind of data points. So this is the most important optimized technique that we should use with respect to the convergence algorithm. Okay. And uh, this basically gets applied in an amazing way. And most important interview questions when you're learning machine learning algorithms. So yes, in the next video, we are going to also continue and understand about the performance metrics. Thank you.